Hello chemists and welcome back to Bale's Chemistry. In this video, I'm going to introduce the rate equation. This is AQA specification 1.9 rate equations and is on paper two of your final exams. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. We'll start by taking a look at a simple reaction of reactants A and B forming products C and D. If we change the concentrations of reactants, it will have an impact on the rate. Each reactant can have a different impact on the initial rate of reaction, so we assign each reactant an order. This is the measure of their individual impact on the initial rate of reaction. If you're not sure what the initial rate of reaction is, go back and watch my video previously. These orders are relatively straightforward to understand. A zero order reactant will have no impact on rate. A first order reactant will have a directly proportional impact on rate, so if you doubled the concentration of a first order reactant, you would double the rate. And finally, a second order reactants are proportional to the square of the reactant. So if the reactant is doubled, then the rate will be quadrupled. It can be helpful to visualize the impact of each order of reactant on rate. And that's what we'll do now. In a zero order reactant, as concentration of the reactant increases, the rate will stay the same. In a first order reactant, as concentration increases, the rate will increase by the same amount. It's proportional. And for a second order reactant, as the concentration increases, the rate will increase by double the amount, what we call a square proportional. Now orders can only be determined from experimental data and I'll explore how to do that on my next episode. Once we've calculated the orders, we can build what we call a rate equation. This shows the impact of any reactants on the rate. If a reactant is zero order, we don't include it in the rate equation. As orders of reaction can only be determined experimentally, rate equations must also be determined from experimental data. We start with the initial rate of reaction. This equals the rate constant, which is multiplied by the concentrations of the reactants, which are held to the power of their order of the reaction. Now the rate constant for this reaction will be constant at this temperature. So if we were to go back to our example of A plus B makes C plus D, and our standard rate equation, and we were to do some experimental work where we observed that doubling the concentration of A caused the initial rate to double. We could then say that A would be first order, and this would allow us to set M in our equation to one. If we then doubled B and the rate went up four times, we'd then say that B would be second order, and we'd set N to the value of two, which would give us this rate equation. The bigger the rate constant, will give us an indication that the rate of reaction is now faster. So to summarize then, changing the concentration of reactant changes the initial rate. The impact a reactant has can be classified as zero order, first order, or second order. The rate equation shows the reactants and their orders. The bigger the rate constant, the higher the initial rate of reaction. Thanks chemists for watching this episode of Bale's Chemistry. If it's been useful, give us a thumbs up. And for more content, subscribe to the channel.